I remember some years ago hearing someone speaking, I think it was on the, the radio. He was a statistician. And he was speaking about what made people compatible. I think he was making quite a living by advising people who were devising dating apps on what questions to ask people. Which questions were most likely to ensure a good match? And this guy responded that he had drilled it down to just two questions. And if he asked a huge population of people who were looking for a partner, a bunch of questions, there were two that gave the most clear statistical indication of compatibility. And they were rather odd. The first one was about how long you had lived abroad. His statistics seemed to show a very strong correlation that couples were much more likely to get together and stay together a long time if their experience of living in another country was similar. Someone who had lived away from their own place for a year or so was surprisingly likely to find compatibility with someone who had done the same thing. They would be attractive to one another. There was another indicator too. Again, a surprising one. But a huge correlation. A huge statistical significance. And it was about how much you liked horror films. Somehow there was this huge, significant possibility of compatibility amongst people who shared the same tolerance or lack of it for horror movies. Well, I don't know how many of my own secrets I am giving away this afternoon, but I have lived abroad a few times for three months each time. And I can't stand horror. Put me in a room with a horror movie and all I will do is long for it to be over. It is too much. The tension, the blood, the gore, the people around me enjoying it, it is too much. When will it be finished is the only thing that I can think about. Good Friday does not come to me easily. Some people within the Christian faith believe very strongly that there is meaning in suffering. And I tend towards the view that suffering means that all meaning has been stripped away from life. To suffer is to lose meaning, not to gain it. I have always struggled with the idea that suffering and pain are righteous. I do not think they are. I think they are terrible. I have colleagues and friends who believe that suffering and pain are righteous and holy, that they are sometimes necessary or God-willed. But no God I believe in could will the suffering of any human soul. And so a lot of the, the theology around the cross and around Good Friday I find hard to stomach. I find this day a difficult one. 
The images from Scripture are horrific. The emotional abandonment that we had last night at the end of Monday Thursday, I find considerably, considerably easier. Our Lord ended up then alone and betrayed and with the crowd baying for death, and then he ends up alone in a prison cell. The popularity of the mob last, Easter, last Palm Sunday when he enters Jerusalem, turning rather quickly to something frightening, a reminder of how easily any of us can be swayed by the mentality of the mob. But all of that leads to an abandonment and a loneliness on the end of Monday Thursday that I can relate to. It evokes pity in me. But today, I experience this as a horror movie, and it turns my stomach. It is hard to know what to do with it, except simply to allow that horror to tell its own truth, to be present with it as much as possible, to learn from it, experience it, to be with others with it. To let it tell its truths to me. For Christ is crucified when unjust systems condemn people to death for their beliefs. And Christ is still crucified when war is seen as a pathway to peace. Christ is crucified when children starve Christ is crucified when people are abused. Christ is crucified when inequality triumphs and ruins human potential. Christ is crucified when patriarchy has its all too familiar way. And I can see the crucifixion in all these things. I can see crucifixion in all these things where human inaction and human action cause suffering and pain and despair. But I can see the experience of Christ on the cross too in things which have no human action behind them, the things that are unfortunate, unlucky, tragic, health conditions leading to unimaginable pain. Those whom we know whose experience of grief seems overwhelming because it keeps coming again and again in an unreal way. Those who have experiences of pain which have no explanation. I understand the cross through all these things. But there I go again, for my fear of horror movies makes me want to look anywhere but at Calvary right now. To look at anything and say that is the pain of Christ, rather than look at the cross and upon his suffering. I'd rather relate to the horror that I can explain, or the horror that I can pity, than simply look at the horror that is played out on the crosses, on the hill, as Christ and the others are put to death. Some see his words, it is finished, as marking a moment of great triumph. I've never been able to see them that way. The absurdity of the death penalty wasn't finished by this. It carried on killing and carries on killing in the world we know. The tragedy of those who think that a sharp, violent surge of death can keep the people in order, well, that has obvious echoes today too. The pity of an unsettled world where violence seems so often to have the upper hand it goes on and on, and on and on, 
it wasn't finished by any of this. I watch as civilian populations in Israel and Gaza have been weaponized over the last few months, and I feel utter despair. The reality of apparent war crimes being carried out in Gaza is on our screens. It is on the screens that we each carry, even in our pockets. The brutal cruelty of terrorist acts is played out in our timelines on every device we look at. Using people as human shields is a war crime. Using the starvation of others is a war crime. Who needs horror movies today? But there I go again, seeing it all through the lens of what is happening now, the things that we see in the news and the things that we can so often forget, the things we don't get to see, the forgotten wars, the forgotten injustices. But there I go looking away from the cross again. The horror is in front of us today on Good Friday. A young man is strung up, and for what? for telling us that we were loved, for sharing wise stories, pithy sayings to live by, for not being the leader of the militant faction that so many were hoping for. What was the point of his death? What is the point of this horror? And what does he mean when he says, it is finished. Dear Lord on the cross, believe me when I look at you and shake my head. It isn't finished at all. The horror movie goes on playing. The violence goes on being justified. The pain goes on being felt. The horror is too awful to bear. On this day, we make it more palatable. We comfort one another, and we do so deliberately with our silences and our music. We sit in a relatively safe and beautiful space to think about these things. And here we abide with the story of a crucifixion playing out in our inner souls. And here we stay and here we think about the dear young Savior on the cross for whom it is now finished. And here we stay and here we think about those places and those people whom we know for whom it is not. <laughs>